A major shakeup at Cricket West Indies and a CARICOM leader takes a strong stance on the recent meeting between Caribbean leaders and the U.S. President. This is your Barbados Today Morning News update for Monday, March 25, 2019. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. We start off with news that Dave Cameron is out and Ricky Skerritt is in. The major shakeup at Cricket West Indies has shocked many across the sporting fraternity, among them Franklin Stevenson, former Barbados player and coach. Cameron's six-year presidency ended yesterday at the organization's annual general meeting in Jamaica. Pundits were predicting a tight race, but in the end, the vote was 8-4. Dr. Kishore Shalu is the new vice president. A relieved Stevenson tells Barbados today he's surprised by both the results and the margin of victory for Skerritt, a former West Indies cricket team manager. I feel relieved and I feel that uh, the rest of the Caribbean feel that way as well, the majority, you know, and I'm very glad that it's not this a uh, political setting where you can just bypass the people and just get a few uh, board members to say that they're going to elect you and back in the position. So I'm happy that it's happened. I thought that it was going to be, you know, this uh, watershed thing going on all the time. And I really feel that cricket has a chance to develop, you know, and I hope that Mrs. Skerritt sees it that way as well. I really think that it's the position that you should hold for a, minimum, a maximum of three or four years or so, and then somebody else takes over. You know, so I'm very happy that we've had this, that we've got a change. Stevenson also believes the change has been long overdue. I, I think the Caribbean has been calling for this. You know, cricket has been calling for this. And, and I'm very happy. I hope that Mr. Skerritt sees that he has a job to do to get West Indies cricket back. Pretty much almost to the people, you know, and I, I, I hope then that, uh, you know, with the, I wouldn't say a new resurgence because the team has been fluctuating uh, quite a bit, but uh, I saw some lovely performances and some, you know, inspiration coming back uh, to the people's, uh, uh, even the attending matches and so on. So I'm really hoping that uh, I can see that continue and the president goes back into the background and, and presidency and that sort of stuff goes into the background and the player comes to the forefront and the youngsters can aspire to uh, achieving and participating. On to other news, mischief and a creeping coup d'etat. That's how St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez has summed up recent actions by the United States on the situation in Venezuela and is making it clear that the Prime Ministers of Jamaica, St. Lucia, Haiti and the Bahamas who met with U.S. President Donald Trump last week cannot speak on behalf of CARICOM. The leader of the Dominican Republic also attended that meeting. And we in CARICOM have to be very alive to the mischief that some persons may be up to to seek to divide us in a manner which we ought not to be divided and therefore reduce the extent of the efficacy of our work. In any case, we owe our friends in Mexico and Uruguay the obligation to work with them because we have established a mechanism with them. Now, the United States of America has made it plain that it wants regime change. No doubt about that. And they have threatened the use of force against Venezuela. That's contrary to the Charter of the United Nations. And the only way you can threaten force or use force is in self-defense or by way of a resolution of the Security Council of the United Nations. Well, then nobody has alleged that Venezuela has attacked the United States in a way which justifies a, a military response or a threat of force. Dr. Gonzalez accused the United States of causing the situation in Venezuela to worsen through its sanctions, then claiming it was trying to give aid to Venezuelans. The same day that the meeting with the Caribbean leaders was being held, the U.S. announced tough new financial sanctions targeting Venezuelan banks. The Vincentian leader also had some words for his fellow Caribbean leaders. Why well, don't leave the people with their money, for them to spend their money on the food and the medicine? And the visit of these four prime ministers, these four governments, is a matter which is very troubling to me. 
from the standpoint of the solidarity within CARICOM. Some people may want to go stronger than that. I'm not going stronger than that. But I think I've out outlined with sufficient clarity to justify my opinion and my conclusion that it is troubling for the efficacy and the unity of CARICOM. Dr. Gonzalez was in Barbados for a meeting on regional carrier Liat. Another meeting on that matter will be held in Barbados again on Wednesday, this time with unions. People matter. That short but sober message to the Barbados Labour Party from its leader, the country's Prime Minister Mia Motley. She was addressing the BLP's annual Founders Day service yesterday at the Calvary Moravian Church, Roebuck Street, Bridgetown. Motley reminded members not to lose sight of the party's values. The journey of this party is the journey of people. And to that extent, I ask us simply, let us stay focused. Let us remain anchored in those values that inspired not just Grant Lee Adams, but all who were surrounding him at every stage and at every level, and all who came on the journey subsequently. And let us remember, as Sir Harold would tell me all the time, that our journey is not only to bring along those in the country, but to be able to inspire those who we must bring to help in this journey of the party. We can sometimes take it for granted, but I ask all of us not to. I know that there are a lot of young people out there who are in need of support and love and mentorship. And this party is but just one of the institutions that has a duty to reach out to them in whatever way we can. And I don't mean in politics. I mean in that simple way that I spoke to us when I first became leader in 2008, that we have to help people to sleep easier when the night comes. There's regional and international news after this short break. Over now to St. Lucia, where firefighters who have been on strike for almost two weeks have agreed to return to work. But there are some conditions, and they plan to state those in writing to Prime Minister Alan Chastney. HGS News Force reports that the Fire Service Association has been assured that the uncertainty of officers who are on contract will be addressed and that those on probation will get temporary employment. The firefighters took strike action on March 13th. And finally, U.S. President Donald Trump is claiming complete and total exoneration after the special counsel's investigation found no evidence that he nor his campaign associates conspired with Russia to win the presidential election. That's despite reports that he hasn't been exonerated of obstruction of justice during the subsequent investigation. There was no collusion with Russia. There was no obstruction and none whatsoever. And... It was a complete and total exoneration. It's a shame that our country had to go through this. To be honest, it's a shame that your president has had to go through this for before I even got elected. It began and it began illegally. And hopefully somebody's going to look at the other side. This was an illegal takedown. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.